In this session, I'm going to walk you through how to find and download the source code for all of the sessions and workshops in the UE Creative Technology Master Program Creative Technology Toolkit module. In previous videos, we've seen how to download and install Open Frameworks, the C++ framework, how to start our first project using Xcode, and also talked about other development environments for other operating systems such as Windows or Linux. This week, we're going to look at downloading the source code and all the examples that we'll be using over the coming weeks in our projects. We're using a utility called Git, which is running on a website called GitHub. Git is a way of tracking versions. It's as simple as that. It came out of the Linux development environment as a way to manage multiple people working together on source code and to track the changes in source code to be able to deal with a large project. In some ways, it may be a little bit too complicated for very, very simple projects, but when you start using it, you'll realize and find that it speeds development and gets you out of messes of finding folder after folder after folder called final version, actual final version actual final version 7 September edits, real final version duplicate. It allows you to see why you've made changes, when you've made changes, and hold them uh, in a line to be able to review what you've done in case you want to go back to something that you did last week and experiment with that, or go sideways with the version that you've got without throwing away a stable point that you're in. We use it to manage not only the demo code, for all of our modules and sessions uh, in this semester, but also for things like the handbook where we're just editing and tracking the changes in text. Our website repository for our code is at github.com ue-creative-technology. The first thing is the handbook. Here is the handbook for the whole master program. And the second thing that we're interested in is the Creative Technology Toolkit Sessions. If I click this link, I'll see a number of different folds relating to each week of material that we're going through, and a readme.md file. This is Markdown, so it's simple text marked to say what is the title and what is the link, etc. Giving you an introduction to the different sessions that we'll be going through. In this session, we're going to download the source code and look briefly at session one. I can clone this, meaning that I will be kept up to date with any changes that might happen to the core source code, and I can clone this into my own repository on my own local machine. So if I make changes, alterations that I want to contribute to the code on the website, I can do. We'll be dealing with how to use GitHub and how to manage source in a separate session. So right now, all I'm gonna do is download a copy of it. It means that if the source code on its master version on the website changes, I won't be notified. And if I want to contribute changes I've made in the version that I've taken, it's more complicated for me to do that. But for our purposes right now, we're just going to download a zip file with our source code and examples and demo in. So when that's done, I'm going to drag it Take it into my developer folder and put it into my release folder. And as we said before, the applications that we're interested in go into the apps folder. And I'm going to put it into my apps here. I'm going to unzip it. I can get rid of the zip file. And I'm just going to take the name master off the end. Master means it's the main branch of the code. It might be that I have a project that I'm working on and there's a branch that's stable, that everyone can use and I know is reliable. But I want to do some experiments and explore perhaps a new interface or some new functions. And I could make a branch of that code called the development branch. that wouldn't necessarily be stable, but it would allow me to run two projects that were associated in parallel. In this instance, we're just going to use the master session, and if I look inside, I have a readme file explaining the different code, and I'm going to look inside session one. You can see it's arranged as a standard 
looking open framework C++ project. The source code is inside here. And the readme file I can read and have a look at. What we're going to do is have some really simple examples of how to draw things to the screen, send messages from inside the program to outside so I can see what's going on, change color values, and get an input into the system. So if I double click session one in Xcode, again it's going to warn me, yes, I do want to open this. It launches my Xcode editor, or if I were using a different editor that had been set up, such as Visual Studio Code, it would launch that. And I can come to session one and have a look in the source code. Things that I'm interested are main is standard and opens a window that open frameworks will run itself inside. The H file, which is the header file, here, this is our first look at no one frame open frameworks header file and it makes a class or an object called of app and inside there there are a number of different things that of app our application our open frameworks application of what it can do it has the ability to set something up it has the ability to update itself and it has a loop to draw and then here it has a range of things that the system can respond to when they've happened. So application can respond to keys being pressed, keys being released, the mouse being moved, the mouse entering an object, the window being resized, an object being uh, dragged, and the system receiving a message. And this is the standard set of things that an Open Frameworks project will respond to. And we can add any that we like, but these are very common ones, so they helpfully write them in for us. You may see descriptions like this in other instances. And just as a quick aside about C++, what this means, this void setter brackets, is this is a function or a routine called setup. It's not expecting to be told anything. If it were going to be told to do something, it would be inside these brackets, such as if it were told, expecting to receive a number, perhaps loop x number of times. I would pass it the number x, I would tell it the number x. So I would set up and give it a number here, and the void means that I'm not expecting any answer to come back from it. If I was expecting it to do something for me and bring a number back to tell me how many people were in a room, how many times an object had run, the size of something, I would specify what kind of thing I was expecting it to return to me. So I could say, give me a number, and then set up something with a number. In this instance, setup doesn't give me any response, and I'm not going to tell it anything other than just run yourself. In C++ file, which is our main app file, I can see I have a routine of function called setup. It's not sending anything back to the main program, and setup will run just once. So if I wanted to set variables, screen sizes, um, uh, describe elements that are going to be used in other parts of my program and might do it here if they hadn't been already described in the header file. Every time um, the processor loops through, the application will try and update itself. And if there are particular things that need to be updated, values that need to be changed, uh, perhaps checking the status of some piece of hardware that's attached, I would do that in update. And this runs continually in a loop updating things that are inside the program. And if I want to draw things to the screen, I will do them in the of app draw loop. And this piece of code here, which is full of lots and lots of comments between the open curly bracket and the closed curly bracket, will loop around after the update, it will draw and update and draw and update and draw and update and draw as fast as it can, and it will go through executing these commands. If I have two slashes at the beginning of a line, this is a comment and the program will ignore it. So if you read through, I've put lots and lots of uh, instruction and hopefully relatively clear description of what's going on, and some things for you to try. 
In looking at our code, we have a comment and a comment explaining that this is going to be a draw circle. Any command that begins OF is an open frameworks command. It's not something that C++ knows about, but it's something that Open Frameworks knows how to do, and then subsequently tells C++. So the off draw circle will actually be a complicated function with lots of code inside that understands what to do when we say do something that's 400 by 400 by 60. In this instance, it tells us the x and the y coordinates to start drawing a circle and the radius of the circle in pixels, bearing in mind that Open Framework starts, uh, as many computer programs do, from the top left being 0, 0, and across and down being our x and y, as opposed to perhaps ordinary paper graphs where it would be the opposite. So the first thing it's going to do is draw us a circle, and everything else when we look down is actually commented out. So if I click Compile, you can see it's going through and compiling and linking. It succeeded the build. It will make me a window. And it's drawn me a circle, 400 pixels across, 400 pixels down, 60 pixels in diameter. If I come back and say, well, I actually draw it at 400 pixels across, 100 pixels down, and only 10 pixels in diameter. We compile again. I can see it's 400 pixels across, 100 down, and 10 pixels in diameter. And although it looks like it's not changing, every time the draw loop is called, it's drawing it again and again and again and again. So I'm able to draw a circle which is sort of interesting for a very short period of time. I can also do things like draw a rectangle. So if I come to example 2 here, using the command OF draw rectangle, I'm just going to uncomment this last line. And you can see now, helpfully, Open um, Xcode has recognized this command, realized that this part is a command, and these part are parameters. They're things that go with the command to explain what the command should do and how it should do it. In this instance, we want to draw a rectangle at 10, 10, so 10 pixels across, 10 pixels down, with a width of 200 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. And at the end of the line, I have a semicolon. So now, I run my code again and it draws me a rectangle on the circle. So going through, I can uncomment elements of the tasks. So read through at your own pace. One useful thing here is to be able to send messages out from the system. I'm going to start making more complicated uh, calculations, making more complicated work. Sometimes I don't get the numbers that I want or the reaction that I want, so it's useful to be able to dig inside the system and say, what's happening at this point here? Is it getting the number that I expect? Is it doing the thing that I expect? And I can use console out to have a message sent out from the application to read out onto a console so I can see the numbers that are being pushed around in the system that I've built. So if I uncomment the next line here at C out, console output, it's actually a pipeline. These little arrows say, glue all these things together and then output it to the console. So to the console output, I'm going to pipe in the quote, hello there, and then I'm going to pipe in end L, end line, which is like doing carriage return on a typewriter. This is a console output. And at the end, I've got the two slashes, which make the rest of this a comment. And you can see that helpfully Xcode, my development environment, has realized that and highlighted it in green. So here, down here, is my console. If I click Build, it's going to run my application. And you can see it's repeatedly streaming down Hello There. 
And this could be an output explaining a variable, saying, hello, I've got to a particular point in a program to allow me to see what's going on inside. So with the rest of the session, work through paying attention to how we draw a line from one point to another, how you can align to draw squares out of multiple lines, how to find out the width and the height of the screen by using rather than a command that says go and do something, but a function that says go and find me something. In this case, OF get width says please ask Open Frameworks to get me the width of the screen that I'm running on. And that number that comes back, I can substitute for another number. So we'll dig into this in a second video where I'll explain more, but get going and see how you get on.